Hello, I'm Brad Carmack, the author of Homosexuality, a Straight BYU Student's Perspective. In this video, I will be addressing the question of what causes homosexual orientation. Oftentimes, when people discuss homosexuality, this is one of the first questions that arises. Uh, you're probably aware there are a number of different theories. For instance, uh, people are molested into a homosexual orientation. Um, they're born that way because of their genes. Um, they have a predisposition that comes because of a distant father. Um, and other environmental factors, etc. So in this uh, eight minute long-ish uh, YouTube video, I will be addressing the question and bringing up some scientific studies um, which bear on the answer to that question. First, let's start off with a little bit of a primer on sex determination. So uh, the default human embryo in the fetus is uh, female, which has a orientation, sexual orientation towards men. Of course, that's the stereotypical female orientation. Now, a fetus is bipotential. Uh, zygote. The zygote is bipotential. That means it could become either a male or a female. Now being the default of a female means that a, a whole bunch of steps have to go right in order for a fetus to go from its default status of a female into a male. And every human zygote has the precursors for both sets of uh, genitalia. They have malarian ducts, um, which are precursors to the uterus and fallopian tubes, and they also have wolfian ducts which are the precursors to the prostate and seminal vesicles. So basically what happens in order to have a default female embryo turn male is there is an SRY gene. Um, the SRY is the sex determining region of the Y chromosome. You may remember that the XY is a male and the XX is a female. So there's a sex determining region on the Y chromosome that codes for TDF, which is known as testis determining factor and TDF is responsible for causing a cascade of changes that result in changing the default female embryo into a male embryo. Okay, so a lot of things can go wrong along this process of going from a default female into a male embryo and they usually deter, um, turn on the presence of uh, hormones during fetal development, uh, most especially testosterone needs to come in at just the right time and just the right dosage in order to um, change the default female to a male embryo. Now there are a number of things that can go wrong here. Um, endocrine disruptors can uh, kind of pervert this process in that um, endocrine disruptors such as DES, it's an um, industrial chemical, can enter the womb. They can mimic some hormones uh, such as testosterone. They can um, block the hormones from binding to the receptors. Um, they can uh, go through the cycle a lot more times than testosterone normally does or other hormones and they can uh, cause changes in the sex determination such that it doesn't complete normally. Um, uh, Theo Colborn in her book has talked about some of the effects of endocrine disruptors. Um, she talked about uh, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. This is uh, human beings that are phenotypically female meaning they look like females on the outside, but genetically they're males. Um, and these individuals have gonads inside, but instead of ovaries, they're testes inside. Again, these people look like women, but genetically they're men. And they usually don't notice that these individuals are genetic males until puberty, when menstruation doesn't start, menarche doesn't begin. Um, so that's complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, and it can result from endocrine disruptors. Okay, so this is just a little bit of a um, precursor on the uh, sex determination. Again, the point is that there's a gene on the Y chromosome which produces test, um, testis determining factor, which helps the default female embryo to turn male. And there's a number of hormones that are also vital to that process. And those hormones can be blocked, disrupted, or mimicked in ways that will frustrate um, that transformation from a female to a male embryo. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at some other scientific studies that bear on this question. Um, now you may be aware that there's about a 1.5 to 2 times uh, the incidence of gay men compared to lesbian women. Um, if there was in fact a, uh, if homosexual orientation as one theory goes is primarily biological in origin, which comes from two primary factors, uh, prenatal hormones like testosterone and um, genes then they would predict that there would be more gay men than there would be lesbian women because there are more steps in the process that could go wrong going from the default female, which is again an orientation towards men, 
into an orientation towards women, which is the default um, sexual or the stereotypical uh, orientation for men. So um, that's, that theory would predict that there would be a higher incidence of gay men than lesbian women simply because there are more steps um, for things to go wrong in that process. And in fact, that is what is observed, again, 1.5 to 2 times. Uh, we'll take a look at another set of studies that have been done on hands. Um, there's a, on the second to the fourth digit, ra uh, um, digit ratio, so you can, you can measure how many millimeters long the second digit is and the fourth. If you put the second over the fourth digit, um, you get a, a ratio. And, and for men and for women, that ratio is stereotypically different, and the difference is statistically significant. Well, what happens when you measure the um, two to four digit ratio for homosexual oriented men? Again, this is measured by their own self-report versus those who self-report as being heterosexually oriented. Is there a difference? Well, if they were um, molested into their orientation, or if they chose their orientation, or if they um, you know, kind of picked it up like you might pick up a cold or sort of infected or recruited into homosexual orientation, uh, you wouldn't expect to see much difference between the second and the fourth digit ratio according to the theory that uh, homosexual orientation is chosen or you're molested into it or you're infected by it. The um, biological theory, this again would predict that uh, most of the variability in homosexual orientation is caused by genes and prealla hormones, um, would predict that you would observe a difference, and it might it would likely be a statistically significant one, because the um, again the default uh, zygote of female going to male, if something goes kind of wrong along that process, then you would more likely have the um, orientation towards men in a male. And in fact, when you uh, do the measurements, and there's been about ten of these that are replicated the same study, you find that the homosexual oriented population, the the ratio is gender shifted away from the heterosexually oriented male norm and towards the heterosexually oriented female norm. Okay, so um, homosexual oriented women as well, the ratios are gender shifted towards the average of straight men. So that's one study. The second one is uh, twin studies. In fact, a very large um, broad scale one came out last year in Sweden. It was taking a look at um, identical compared to fraternal twins and it says, well, the fraternal twins, they, uh, they don't share the same sperm and egg. They just, uh, they have the same parents, but they have no more genes in common than a typical uh, sibling pair would. Identical twins, on the other hand, they came from the same sperm egg union. And so uh, they have a lot more of their genetic material in common. And so you ask the question, you take these fraternal twin pairs and say, how often do these fraternal twins share the same sexual orientation compared to the identical twins? How often do they share the same sex orientation. And if it's different, it seems reasonable to presume that the only significant difference um, between those two groupings, if you're taking a large sample size, would be um, the genetics that are in common. Presume they kind of have the same um, upbringing as uh, other pairs of siblings in other settings. And um, in fact, a number of these uh, twin studies, including the one in 2010, found a significant difference between the fraternal and identical twin pairs, such that it seems that about 25%, and again it varies a little bit based on if you're looking at women or men, about 25% of the variability in sexual orientation is due to um, heritable factors. Of course, the only heritable factors that we know of are genes. Okay, so um, this concludes this short clip, and we'll have a little bit more look at some of the studies here in a minute.